Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to play with some more watercolor paper and uh, this time I'm going to use some distressed oxides. I have uh, three colors here which is the uh, Vintage Photo, Walnut Stain and uh, Hickory Smoke. I think they came in a three pack like this. And then I stumbled across a spray, shimmering spray from uh, dilutions and this is in a fresh lime and I don't know if you can pick it picks up on the camera but it's got some shiny uh, shimmering effects to it which I thought was kind of fun a little little bling in my journals uh, so I've been playing away with some uh, practices here practice sketches and just I've never used ink as a uh, watercolor medium so I thought I'd give it a go and see what kind of effects it has and it, it turns out there's some really fun things you can do with it and uh, we're going to play with that today so here's another one and uh, we're going to doodle so we are going to draw some things today uh, now if you don't like to draw you can stamp of course uh, there's no pressure here it's all about what you're comfortable with um if you're you're welcome to of course challenge yourself as well uh which is what i would encourage but if you if you're not comfortable with drawing and you really just want to experiment without that kind of stress then go ahead and use the stamp um or trace an image down onto your uh watercolor paper i do recommend a watercolor paper for this project just because there's an absorbency to it uh, that you can't really get from a regular piece of paper. So this is just a cheapy Michaels 130-pound uh, weight water paper and acid-free. So it's a it's a lower-end watercolor paper. So it's affordable for these fun experimental projects. But if you're going to get into watercolor, um, if I was going to spend money on watercolor, it would be on the paper and not even the paint and the brushes. It would be mostly on the paper. And uh, there's all kinds of different ones out there that you can play with paper-wise. And uh, you'll get, you'll, you're going to find one that you really do like the most. I'm also going to be using a graphics uh, line marker. This is a 0 0.05, so a very fine tip. And we're just going to do some, uh, some little doodles here. So again, if you want to use a, a stamp and play with that and paint that in, um, just use something that doesn't bleed, a permanent ink. And uh, you can also run um, your watercolor paper through your printer and print a black and white image. So there's all kinds of options to get your images going. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to draw. So I like the kind of look of these, these little wild roses. Uh, so I think we'll do these again. And you can slow the video down. I'm not going to get too much into the drawing details in this video because I don't want it to be hours long. Uh, this video I want to be more about the distressed oxides more than anything else. So if you want to sketch what I'm sketching, uh, you can slow the video down and just kind of sketch along with me. Hopefully you can see it. I am back in the trailer this, this week and uh, I've been working away on the property. So I am just sitting down here and decided I'm gonna go play with some some of my stuff today I need a little break from the moving and slugging wood and things like that so I thought it's time I need to get my creative juices flowing so to speak <laughs> so I'm gonna do some sketching and some uh, just some loose just to loosen me up here with this distressed oxide and I've been really into the water using watercolor paper I've been into sketching with these liners uh, with these really fine liners I've done a lot of sketches so I think I'm going to do a digital kit with black and white sketches and I just have so many doodles it's kind of like what I do in the evening I just doodle away it keeps me out of the fridge I think <laughs> otherwise they'd snack all day and all night so I'm just going to give uh, a couple more little details here in the flowers. And I like to run a little bit of ink detail and then come back to it once this is all dried. And hopefully it will dry. That's the problem with my my YouTube is uh, I don't 
let anything dry. It takes time. Now that what's nice about these ink uh, distressed oxides is they do evaporate quite quickly. So this should be dry in time for me to uh, manipulate it again on video with my pen here. I'm just going to give myself some fun little rose uh, leaves. I actually like the leaves sometimes better than the flowers. They're just such pretty leaves. So I'll put some of that texture in. And maybe another one right here. And I'm not stressing about the drawing. I'm just nice and loose. You can take your time, of course. But this, the point of these videos is to be experimental with your products. So whether you have watercolor, pencils, inks, anything, anything that you can dilute with water, we can play with today. And that's what these little videos are been about lately which I've really been enjoying doing. So very loose on the sketching. And not a lot of detail. So uh, these uh, leaves normally have like rigid kind of rough pointy edges, but I'm not even putting that detail in. I just want to sketch it in and get going on the, the ink here. I suppose I could have pre-sketched it, but I wanted to sketch along with you guys and hopefully you're joining me and giving it a go. Let me get past the fear of drawing, which a lot of people, a lot of people have. Um, they kind of set themselves up for failure because they say they can't draw before they even try. And, and like anything, it's, it's practice, right? Uh, I can't bake, but when I bake with a friend, suddenly I can actually make a cake because she shows me how. And that's all this is, is just practice and playing and experimenting and having fun. So, but you do what you're comfortable with. If you want to use the stamp, use the stamp. No rules here at the Creative Cove. All right, so I think um, I might just extend this down one more maybe put something in this corner. So when I'm drawing, I try to think uh, composition wise, what's interesting and how to keep the balance, the page balanced. So right now it's quite top heavy. So I think if I draw the, uh, a flower down here, maybe uh, facing down a little bit just for something different, it might uh, help offset the balance and put some weight at the bottom of the page here. So there we go, just put one facing this way and a stem going back. And maybe we'll do another rose hip coming off here, just for bringing this texture down. Put that right there, going right off the page. Nice rose hip. I think that's what they're called, right? When, they, when the flower's finished, I could be wrong. I don't, I can't grow roses. I kill them. I don't know why. Uh, the bugs get to my roses usually before I even have a chance to really enjoy the flower. All the, the leaves are gone and then the flower suffers. So I just have to put more time and energy into them, I think. They are worth growing. Maybe just one more rose hip coming out this way just for something and maybe one more petal here and you can keep drawing and keep drawing but again I, want, I do want this more to be about the playing with the distressed oxide than the actual drawing but yeah slow me down if you if you want to do this drawing along with me that's good I think composition is pretty good on that so I have my watercolor brush and it is a number six round uh, an aqua elite and I have sprayed, though I will spray some more, uh, sprayed the colors into my watercolor palette here. And that one's pretty good. This is the walnut. This is the, the gray one, which I can't think of the name. Smoky, 
uh, hickory smoke. And this one, I don't know if it showed you, I think I did at the beginning of the video, is that shimmering spray, the green. And it's, wow, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I was really, really having fun with adding some of that bling. So hopefully that palette is relatively in there. And then I have a piece of paper and a cup of water. So let's, uh, let's just throw some in. Uh, this is the hickory. So you'll see that unlike watercolor, this will dry very quickly compared to watercolor, unless you keep adding water to it. So it will dry with these sharp lines. So see how that's dried already? So when I add water, it's it will dilute a little, but it's gonna leave those, those sharp edges almost instantly, which is kind of cool. So I'm going in with a pretty opaque layer in some of these. I'm not worried about going into the leaves. If I go into the leaves, so be it. I'm, I'm not really worried about it being perfect. I just want to drop some of this color in. Now in underneath these um, petals, in between the flowers and petals, I do want to go a little bit darker, a little bit more opaque because I do want those colors to pull away. So, uh, but again, not, not super neat. And this is the, hic the hickory, yeah. So, and if you find you over, I feel like that might be a little too dark, I'm gonna just dab it in and remove a little bit. Try and stay in control. So this is the vintage photo, which has a little bit of a warmer tone to it. More of a rusty color, which is really quite pretty. And again, just rolling around. If it gets in the flower, it's okay. Might actually put some in the center here. I'm gonna keep this palette very neutral. So I'm just gonna use those colors that I showed you. Now I don't want the harsh line in the flower, so I'm gonna add the water and I'm gonna dilute it. Just wanna soften those so they're not too strong. I'll throw this color over here. Goes in the petals, that's okay. And then I think I'm gonna to touch into that hickory. Smoked hickory. Keep getting my colors all mixed up. The gray one. <laughs> Just add a little bit of a cooler tone. At least this feels cooler compared to the, the browns, though it is a pretty warm gray. And see, the, see how the, the line of water is starting to dry and it leaves these really beautiful kind of old watermarks, which is one of the things I really like about this Distressed Oxide. So I'm gonna go in with the darker hickory, it is hickory, right? I know what I'm talking about, jeez. Walnut, sorry, walnut is this brown one and hickory is the gray one. My apologies. All right, I'm just gonna, Put in the negative space with this darker color. Oh, it sounds like my husband might be home. So he's probably going to make a big loud noise coming in the trailer. So I apologize for that because he doesn't know I'm here doing a video. Timing, I tell you. Not always timing. Let's go into this really fun green. So I don't know if you see how shimmering it is, but is it ever fun color? And I'm gonna pop some of that in these leaves. I'm not even gonna worry about getting the leaf perfect or worrying about it bleeding with the other colors. I just wanna throw it in and let it saturate the paper. and have some fun with it that way just like that such pretty green and i'm gonna go in now and fill in all those little spots that i did miss so right in here and right in here and it's going to bleed with green which can be a nice little look as well 
and then maybe just dab a little bit of that off. And then let's do the splatter while, while it's drying. So it has another little effect. So when it's drying, uh, when it's wet and you hit it with the ink, it's, the ink will soften and create soft splatters. And then if it's dry and you hit it with some wet ink with the splatter, I'm just recording a video. Okay. And, um, and it will uh, create two different looks, right? A very dry spotted look and a very soft wet look. So I think there's a nice amount of contrast in there, but I would like to add a little bit more of a darker color. So these are some watercolors I had left over, and I'm sorry I don't have the names, but um, I just mixed the three primaries together. So here's some blue. Uh, inside there I had some of that distressed wal that walnut one, the walnut um, dis distressed oxide, and I'm mixing it with my watercolor. I'm gonna add in a little bit of red, and a tiny touch of yellow, and maybe go back to some more blue and create a very dark, dark gray. And I keep playing with these pri primary colors till I get a gray I want, so I think I like this one. And I'm gonna hit the center of the flower. So you see how that kind of spread out like that? And that's because that was wet. And this one's not doing it because it's dry. And so it's fun to experiment with what is um, wet and what is what's dry because it will give you some very different results and that's what we're doing here today is just experimenting and having some fun so i'm going to now soften some of that out so i don't want it too harsh a line kind of spread it out a little absorb it up now when you absorb it you do need a really good watercolor brush to do that with you're not going to be able to do that kind of absorption where you pull the paint back off with a synthetic brush you do need a a natural haired brush for that when it comes to inks and watercolors so I'm just I wanted more of a contrast in here just to really kind of make these flowers pop so add a little bit more to my brush and so What's really fun is you can control the paint by working wet on dry, like over where I am working right now. It's very dry over here. So you can control where the paint goes. Or you can work wet on wet. Do I have any wet on wets? Oh, let me try and create one here. Hang on. Let's get this painted in. Where you can create wet on wet. So if I were to wet this section, for example, probably too much water wet this section and then add that paint to it just want to thin that out before it dries add some paint to it and then let the paint react how it wants and the way where it wants so wherever it's wet is where that paint will bleed to and create some really cool very cool effects and that's part of the experimentation So you're either going to like harsh lines or you're not, or maybe you like the combination of the harsh lines. It's really just playing and letting yourself, giving yourself permission to just have fun and not stress over it being a masterpiece, which a lot, which a lot of people struggle with. They want it to be perfect. They want it to look good their first go. And there's nothing wrong with wanting it to look good, but the less pressure you have, and the more fun you let yourself have, I find the better the results. And, and, and I can relate to that on more than one level, not just with my artwork, but even like making these videos. You know, I want it to work out. I want the experiment to, for people to understand what it is I'm trying to teach them and, and make them comfortable to try it. So it, I find that I give myself pressure to make the videos really good. And then when I'm just like, you know what, I'm gonna have fun and play today and just film what I'm doing. And then the videos I find are better <laughs> because I'm not worrying about it. <laughs> All right. So I like that. I think they're, I think the flowers have enough contrast around them with a the darker background. 
that uh, I think we can play with the flowers a little more. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of that gray, that smoked, um, the hickory, hickory smoke. So I think I'm going to put that into here. Might be a bit too much. Add into the center. And then I'm going to rinse my brush, take some of the water off, and then I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. Just kind of fill in a little bit of color on these petals. And remember, the ink will create a harsh line. So if you don't want that harsh line, you have to move pretty quick. And if you overdo it, you just jab some of it off. I like to leave some of the white poking through on these flowers, just for even a higher contrast. And then I'm gonna add some of this green. I think I'm gonna put some of this, um, what is that called, walnut, oh my gosh, into it. So as you see, the green gets a little more uh, toned down. So it's not that super, super bright green. And we could throw some of that in here. Just have some fun with the green. I'm just going to dab some of that off. It's I think that's a bit too dark, actually. Too dark for what I want. So let's go back to the bright green. And just maybe do another coat, and it will darken it a little bit. I really like the vibrancy of this green, so I don't want to overdo it. And dab some of this off so it dries. And let's do some splattering with the darker color just for some fun effect, some drama, I call it, and it's fun. So just some water on your brush and whatever color you want. So let's revive this ink here, throw that on there, and then we'll let that dry a little bit. I am gonna dab some off because I do want it to dry quickly so that I can sketch. Always sign your work. So it's still very wet. So I want to let that dry. We can talk about this one. So when we're done, we're going to add some of this um, writing here. So this is the the one I'm going to use, which is I use it all the time in my videos. It's I got it off Amazon. And it's just a legible writing, but I just feel like it gives another layer of texture, more interest, and uh, it kind of gives it an old vibe feeling that I, that I'm drawn to. Um, so here I didn't use the gray. I used um, a Payne's gray from a watercolor uh, and it, just to create a little bit more depth in here. So you see that these will pop forward if you have a richer, darker background. And I really, I'm really hoping you can pick up on that shimmer from that green because it's just another dimension, which is really fun. So it's pretty dry. Um, and this, this pen will only work if it's dry. So I think what I'm gonna do is pull it up and try and move it a little bit closer, just so you can see the difference. So how close are we here? So you can see that the lines are still there. The watercolor isn't definite and defining each individual shape. It's just an implication of color. So you can visually recreate the lines on some of these petals and you can put some texture back in with the scribbling, like the original sketch. But I like to leave some of the lines not drawn because I like the viewer to fill in the difference. So in a section like this, for example, where all three are meeting, I would probably draw this one out just to visually separate the three because they're all the same color. There's no depth in it because we didn't add a darker shade to these. And that's okay because it, again, it's, it, it's about experimentation and playing. So now I can play with the sketching and see what results I like. So I'm gonna put it back down just because it's a bit tricky to um, draw, hold and draw. I just wanted to kind of do a little close up there. So I'm just gonna do a few, a few of these rebring the draw that um, stem back in because it, it really helps ground the flower with the weight at the bottom and 
button this petal down here maybe. And I think that's really it because I like it the way it is. So I'm pretty happy with that. I can turn that into something fun and useful in a, in a journal. And again, if it's not some, a result isn't perfect, you can cut it up, tear it up and use it into um, scrap pages for backgrounds. And if you're happy with your results, which I hope you are, then you can uh, scan it and photocopy it and manipulate it further or reuse the image over and over again. But don't forget to sign your work, that's important. And just a little signature. So there we go, that's today's. So I'll just hopefully zoom in here and I really hope you can. I am kind of limited on my lighting. Pick up on that real pretty shimmering green. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you like that. If you do, oh wait, I almost forgot. Let's uh, let's stamp. I said I was gonna do it and then I forget. Story of my life. So I'll put the writing the right way up and I just stamp across. Just again for, even if it goes on the flowers, it's awesome. I, it's just another layer of um, interest and you can use any stamp you want. It doesn't have to be writing. And this is a vintage photo I'm using here. So the same color in one of the, the background colors we use. So there it is there. Sorry about that. I forgot about that. There we go. Just another layer, right? Kind of creates more interest. So there, now I'm done. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining and I uh, hope you like that. If you do, hit the subscribe button and would love to see you back. Have some fun playing with your watercolors and having fun relaxing and making little tiny masterpieces. And again, you can make them any size that applies to the size journal you're working on. Have a great day, guys. Bye.